Welcome back to Row & Co Farms. Uh, if you're new here to my channel, um, normally my channel is about homesteading and flower farming and homestead cooking. Um, but the last few videos that I've done, you obviously you've seen that I have been diagnosed with breast cancer. And so my life has made a big, big change. Um, just lots of things have happened over the last couple of months and you know, lifestyle has changed, work has changed, food has changed, obviously health has changed. And so I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about some of that stuff. Um, so the down and dirty, obviously I have breast cancer. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it and you can check that out. Um, you know, basically I have invasive lobular carcinoma. Um, I have not had any treatments yet. Um, I was just diagnosed about four weeks ago and I'm still going through some of the diagnostic things that have to happen. So let's talk about what I am eating and what kind of things that I have changed in my diet or in my life since I found out that I have cancer. Um, well, I have gone from being, I won't say I was a sedentary person, but I wasn't actively exercising every day. I got a exercise bike for Christmas. I have been riding that every single day for at least 30 minutes. And I love it. I'm gonna keep doing that, um, riding a, a bike. Oh, oh, my cat <laughs> just scratched me. Get out of here. Um, riding a bike was something that I used to do regularly in class in a class and when we moved out here to the country i just kind of lost the ability to go to a class they just didn't have that um available here so now that i have the bike where i can get on and it's it's got the screen built in where all the classes are there for me and so i can just get on there every morning easily jump on do my ride get my exercise out of the way and feel better for the day so that is the first thing that i have um, been working on not doing anything anything crazy, just bike rides with, you know, good resistance, building up, you know, muscle with just body weight right now. I'm not doing any weights or anything like that. Just, just riding the bike and following the class. Next is diet. Um, I almost immediately after getting my diagnosis and actually before I even got my diagnosis officially, I contacted um, a good friend of mine. Um, her name is Heather Cohen. She is a functional nutritionist. Uh, she actually is in Arizona, but we do everything over uh, online and you know, video chat and texting and messaging and all that kind of stuff. So she is fabulous. She specializes in cancer patients and patients with autoimmune disorders. And honestly, I'm just really surprised now that I'm really just now thinking about like how it happened that she she came across my Instagram or YouTube or I came across hers or maybe I was introduced to her through some of my other YouTube friends. I really don't know now, but the point is is that for whatever reason her knowledge and her, you know, education came into my life at just the right time because Keto for cancer was not something that I ever, ever thought about or even knew was a thing. I'd heard about a lot of other different alternative or ad adjuvant cancer treatments, but not keto. And so to hear her start talking about it and why, why it's so beneficial really made a lot of sense to me. The, the difference between a conventional approach to cancer and the alternative or naturopathic approach is a conventional guys are concerned about your tumor and only your tumor. Right. It is successful if you don't make it, but your tumor shrinks. <laughs> Unfortunately, right. that's, right. that's like, it's like, like total focus. Yeah. The naturopathic guys are interested in the soil the tumor is growing in right. and the tumor. Right. So they want to make sure that you are healthy and that you're taken care of so that you can actually handle any of the treatments that are necessary to get rid of that tumor or shrink it down or stop it from growing. Okay. So it is, it is about all the resources you can find. It's not about either or. Okay. And it is always about what you are comfortable with. Okay. Because like I said, the conventional doctors don't have to live in your body after this is done. Now, 
since I've obviously done even more research. I've been watching lots of different scientists and doctors who are studying keto for cancer and how beneficial they're beginning to find it uh, to be. And so ultimately a ketogenic diet is using your body's own metabolic pathways, the way it's designed to work and taking, um, instead of giving it sugar and carbohydrates, as its energy source, its main energy source, you're going to let it, you're going to swap over to using fat as your main energy source and do a very low carb diet. So, you know, you hear it sometimes called the, the bacon and butter diet and it's not, it's not really that. I, that's not what I'm doing. I'm doing a very strict therapeutic ketogenic diet. Um, I am obviously following the advice of a nutritionist. Um, we are doing lab work. We are doing, um, we are tracking all of the food that I eat every single day through an app that she monitors and I monitor. Obviously, I, I enter the stuff in and I track my ketones and glucose um, at least once a day. Sometimes I do it twice a day. It just depends. And I'm really trying to stay into ketosis all the time. And so, um, and not just a low level of ketosis, but high ketones um, so that we're just really keeping the body in a good metabolic state to start correcting some of the things that have gone awry um, with the mitochondria in your body. You know, dysfunctional mitochondria, mutant mitochondria, that's, that's what cancer is. And we all have little cells like that floating around in our body. You know, we all have a cancerous cell here and there. It all just depends on was our body, our terrain, our soil in our body, um, how was it able to handle that cell, that abhorrent cell that wasn't supposed to be there. And a lot of times your body can can handle it. It, it can turn, you know, it can turn it around and, and, and kill that cell. But when things have become uh, when you've let your body get into a state of letting the soil become weak, so to speak, the terrain has become weak, it is allowing things to happen to grow that wouldn't normally grow, like weeds. You know, cancer is like a weed, and if you, you know, if you let it take over, if you don't give the, the soil, the terrain, the right nutrients for for stable things to happen, you're just gonna have weeds and weeds will take over. And eventually that's all you have is weeds and cancer is the same way. If you let the terrain and the soil of your body um, get to the point where it's, it's a good growing medium for cancer, well then that's what's gonna grow is cancer. And so what I'm trying to do is metabolically change the terrain of my body so that it doesn't make it a good place for cancer to grow. It makes it a good place for regular, strong cells to be. And so that's what we're trying to accomplish. So keto for me looks like about 230 grams of fat every day, about 80, I think it's 85 grams of protein and 20 carbs, give or take. Um, if I exercise, I get a little more carb, you know, or I get a little more of everything, but um, generally it's 20 carbs or less and I have been able to um, really stick with that. Uh, at first it was hard because again, I was a sugar junkie. I was a carb junkie. I loved my bread and all my grains and my chips and my tortillas and all that stuff is really, it's a mental game. Potatoes, potatoes is my biggest hurdle. And then the sugar too. I, I'm really, I loved to have a sweet snack and a glass of milk every night before I go to bed. So I can't have milk because <laughs> it's got too much sugar and um, I can't, and I can't have milk also because the dairy, I'm not supposed to have much dairy because of the estrogens that are in the milk. Um, and you don't want that, especially if you have a hormone driven cancer like I do. So high fat, moderate protein, low carb in order to get myself into ketosis. So that is what I've been doing. It is working for me. I feel really good. <laughs> Surprisingly, I feel really good. My mental clarity, I would say, is much better. My emotions are better. 
the diet itself has made me feel better, but I think also having something to focus on and something where I can be in control a little bit over what I'm doing. And, you know, with diet, like that's where you have and can exert the most control over your life. And so, so anyway, guys, um, you know, I'm going to show you a few of the things that I'm eating, stuff that I'm doing. Um, but I just wanted to give you kind of an overview of what keto for cancer kind of means and, you know, if it's something that may be beneficial to you, it's something that you can do. And generally speaking, it's going to put you in a better, healthier metabolic state. And that's going to be for almost anyone. So, all right, guys, I'm going to go, um, you know, stick around for the rest of the stuff in the video. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. So we're going to start off by cooking several pieces of baking, bacon. This is about three ounces. Uh, this is duck bacon because I am allergic to pork bacon. So we'll cook this first and whatever fats come off of that, we will use to cook our one ounce of asparagus. And this is about, it's two, uh, it's two broccoli, I'm sorry, two Brussels sprouts cut into little discs. Um, it doesn't look like this is a lot of food, guys, but this really is very, very filling. Then we also have one egg that we're going to fry and put on top. We're going to be using some olive oil, and we also are going to add two cups of this chopped kale. We're going to fry that up as well. So everything will be coated in either our bacon grease or olive oil to make sure we're getting lots of healthy fats. So in total today, this is going to be uh, seven grams of net carbs uh, with 47 grams of fat. And I'll have to go back and check the protein again. So let's get them cooked up. So in total, this meal contains 17 grams of protein, 8 grams of carbs, and 93 grams of fat. The fat sources are the egg, the bacon, the olive oil that I added, and some olive, uh, avocado oil that I added as well. Hey guys, good morning. So. It's about 10 o'clock here. I just got done with my morning workout routine, which is riding my exercise bike. I got a new exercise bike for Christmas. I'm sorry, my nose is itching. Um, and so I've been trying to ride every single morning for about 30 minutes or so. And uh, I'm loving it, really, really loving it. So I just got done with that and I'm gonna prep some food for the day and I'm starting off by making a batch of bone broth in my Instant Pot. I think you guys have seen me do bone broth before, but if you haven't, um, this is a chicken carcass. You can use a whole chicken, you can use whatever you want, but generally you can use just the bones of a chicken. So this is just um, a chicken carcass that I had frozen from um, when we butchered chickens over the summer. I added a couple of stalks of celery, um, a big hunk of onion and some onion peels and two carrots some water, a little apple cider vinegar, salt, pepper, and a couple of cloves of garlic. So I'm gonna put this on for a couple of hours on high pressure, and then I will have some bone broth to drink over the next few days. Uh, so one of the things that I've really figured out is that when you're doing a keto diet, that you have to, you've got to be able to consume your fats either with your with your protein, you know, or with your few carbs that you get. And so that's sometimes very difficult to do. And so I find that drinking the fats, which sounds super gross, but hear me out, <laughs> drinking the fats is a little bit easier than trying to put them over more, you know, vegetables or whatever. So, so yeah, so making a bone broth and then making sure that I add a little extra tablespoon of fat into it before I consume it um, seems to help a whole lot. As long as I stir it up and I don't just like sip the fat right off the top, um, it's actually really good and I'm able to bump up my fat intake for the day um, so I can stay in ketosis. 
so yeah, so bone broth is first on the agenda and I will probably not eat anything until around lunchtime. I'm just not usually hungry until about lunch. Um, I've been on this keto diet for about four weeks now. I've been very strict about it and I'm staying in ketosis daily and so I, I'm just not hungry. I'm, I'm kind of in a fast overnight and in, into the morning for about probably about 15 hours and that seems to be right where I want to start having something to eat. So usually around 11 or 12 I'll start getting hungry and that's when I start thinking about, you know, not thinking about, but that's when I'll start prepping, you know, whatever I'm going to eat for the day. So I still have a little while. Um, I did have just black coffee this morning with a little bit of heavy cream and that pretty much kind of satiates me just a little bit, that, that little bit of fat in the cream there. Um, and so that gets me through until lunchtime. So, so far, that's what we've done for the day. So I've pulled a few things out of the freezer that we're gonna have over the next couple of days. Uh, the first thing is, this is turkey skin. Uh, when we butchered our turkeys this year, we pulled off all the skin and I just packaged it up in these little thin packs. Uh, these are probably about 150 grams or so of skin and I just fry these up and use them um, as like toppings for salads or just eat them like little cracklings. They're really good. Uh, this is an emu rump roast. So um, I'm allergic to beef uh, and pork, so we don't eat any of that here. So we're gonna be using emu as our beef. Uh, this is common for us here, but basically I'm gonna make some kind of beef roast uh, with this this week. Gonna also have some ground turkey and some ground chicken and we will uh, do something with that, maybe a meatball or a meatloaf or something something like that. I usually like to do meatballs because then they're portioned and I know exactly um, how much I'm getting from each portion. Broth is done. We're gonna strain it off and then we can have some. Look at that beautiful bone broth. So you can see that there is fat on the top of the broth there, and we will just make sure that we consume that when we drink it. Now, this last one here really doesn't have any fat, so I'll probably add a couple tablespoons to that one, and I'll go ahead and drink that one and save these other three for later this week. So bone broth is going to obviously be very hydrating. It's going to have lots of nutrients in it from the bones. It has collagen. It has all kinds of great stuff in there. And we have the fats as well. So bone broth is a great way when you're doing keto to administer some of those fats that you need during the day. So like I said, this is some chicken fat. We're going to be adding a tablespoon of that into our broth just to give a little extra fat. I order this through Azure, but I think you can find it other places as well. But this stuff is really, really delicious. So dinner is going to be this emu roast. We're going to turn that into some tacos. Um, I'm going to sear this off really quick, and then we're going to put it into the Instant Pot with some peppers, some onions. I also use beer as my cooking medium and some uh, taco seasoning spices. So let's get started. It's gonna be really yummy. I cannot wait. This is gonna be really good. So into my Instant Pot, I'm going to add a beer. Any beer is fine. That's just to help you know, have a liquid in the pot. Also add some lime juice. This is not really like measured, guys. And then I have a whole bunch of like salt and like taco seasonings. I'm gonna get that mixed up and then we will add our meat and veggies into the pot and, and, and do high pressure for about an hour. All right, we've got all of our meat, veggies, beer and seasonings 
into the Instant Pot and we need to let that go for about an hour on high pressure. So I took out all of the emu meat and shredded it up and just added a little lime juice and those are our veggies on the side. And now I'm gonna get some taco shells ready for myself. So I've just got some shredded cheese and we're gonna melt that in the oven until it's uh, nice and pliable. And then we're gonna take it out and we will lay it over a spoon and make a taco shell from cheese. So I've taken them out when they look like this. I'm just gonna give them a few minutes to cool off and then we will make our taco shape with them. So the taco shells turned out quite tasty. They weren't quite as crispy as I would have liked, but they were really delicious to eat. So this meal was really, really good and very guys, low carb. Um, I have gotten up and done my morning workout. It's about 11 o'clock now and I'm going to have some lunch or breakfast. I don't know. You can call it whatever you want to. Um, it's my first meal of the day. So I am having this, um, I'm calling it like a hamburger helper. Obviously not out of the box, but uh, this is ground turkey, um, mushrooms, a few onions just to add some flavor. What else did I put in here? There's a little bit of mozzarella cheese, a little bit of goat cheese, and uh, just lots of spices and garlic. Um, so it's delicious, absolutely delicious. I've added um, turkey fat to it and a little bit of avocado oil as well. So there's quite a few uh, grams of fat in here and this just one small little bowl here will be completely satisfying for me until, you know, later, much later this afternoon. So yeah, this is what I'm eating today. So this dish contains 40 grams of protein, uh, 42 grams of fat and about seven and a half carbs, which for me is perfect. I today will get about 25 carbs um, if I want to have 25 carbs, um, but usually I don't even hit that now. So uh, yeah, this will be plenty to tide me over for the day, even with some snacks thrown in there as well. Hey guys, so I'm back. I wanted to show you what I'm having for a little bit of a snack this afternoon. Um, yeah, I'm just feeling a little bit hungry. So I'm having, this is my first piece of apple. It's got a little bruise on it, but that's okay. Small piece of apple. It's got a little bit of whatever, herbs or something on it from my knife. Um, I've got just a little handful of almonds, about 15 almonds and six olives. Uh, they're stuffed with blue cheese. So essentially this little snack here has about four carbs total, but it's got quite a bit of fat in it too. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be a good little snack here. I'm excited and I'm hungry. Nice little snack. I'm going to slice up this piece of turkey skin and we're going to fry it up into little pieces and put some salt on it. And that is gonna be our little snack. It's gonna be delicious. All right, there are our little chopped up pieces. We're gonna put those in a really hot pan. So you're just cooking these down kind of like you would bacon, just rendering out the fat and making them this is some of the chicken bone broth that we made together a few days ago and I'm just going to heat that up and that's going to be part of my snack so lots of fat and just lots of good hydration just a little bit of protein but no carbs there there's my crunchy little snack and my bone broth so this is a total of 63 grams of fat and no carbs. So I've been marinating some beautiful shrimp in this bag all day, and we are going to fry them up in our oil in this pan. This oil is left over from where we rendered our turkey skins earlier. So we're just gonna use that oil to cook our shrimp with. I've got a whole bowl of shredded zucchini, and we're gonna add that into what's left of this sauce in here and get that sauteed up so it'll be nice and fragrant and delicious. Hey guys, good morning. It's another day of meals with my keto diet. So I wanted to bring you uh, my first official meal of today, which is going to be this beautiful frittata. 
Um, so the difference between a frittata and a quiche is the crust. I am not eating any crust. Uh, so we're just using basically just eggs and whatever veggies that we like. And so I sauteed up a couple of cups of mushrooms, um, about a, maybe a quarter cup of onion just to add some flavor. And then we sauteed up about two cups of kale and then we just added in the eggs and a little bit of cheese. And we did that on the stove top and then we put it into the oven to finish cooking everything off. Uh, so I can divide this into four servings and each serving is about four carbs. Um, so that is perfect. Um, I cooked it with a bunch of ghee uh, to add that oil and fat that I need. And um, yeah, it's gonna be a perfect, perfect breakfast slash lunch today. Yum, that looks really good. So this is 20 grams of protein, 16 grams of fat, and four grams of carbs total. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me for this video. Just sharing some of the um, things I'm doing to prep for my cancer treatment, the diet and the foods that I'm eating, and just all the stuff that goes along with getting your body ready for um, for cancer treatments and for having cancer in general. So hopefully you found this interesting. Thanks for coming along on this journey with me. I really do appreciate everybody's support. Um, you all have been really wonderful. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to see you guys next time here at Rowan Co. Farms.